Benjamin from Source Decoded. I'm here with another quick video about uh, an array function. Jared in a previous video covered reduce, um, which takes an array and by calling a function on every element of the array, the array reduces it down to a single value. I'm going to use kind of the same use case that he was using to explain a couple other functions, map and join. So the use case we're dealing with um, is, as anybody who's worked with the DOM, or especially in jQuery knows, it's really nice to be able to style an element um, using this sort of object literal. We'd pass this object literal into jQuery that's selected an element, and jQuery would go ahead and apply all of those rules to uh, the element that we've selected. That's cool and convenient, but the problem is that um, if you're trying to write a high-performant web application that comes with a performance penalty because for each of these rules jQuery does them separately and every time a style rule is applied to an element um, the browser is forced to reflow and repaint at least part of the DOM and um, that turns out to be really expensive if you do it very much so what you really want to be doing is applying that to the CSS text property of the element something like um, so I have this element up here already. I want to be able to do element.style.css text and you can see that it has some there already. To, uh, to style this thing really quickly um, I, I would just assign um, some CSS text to that and the browser would do it all at the same time resulting in only one reflow and repaint. Um, so Jared showed you how to turn this style object into a string using reduce, um, but in my opinion, reduce can be a little hard to read if, you, if you're not used to it. So I'm going to show you a different way. First of all, I, although I want to go over kind of the old style procedural way that you may have done this in the past. Um, you might have used a for loop to go through all of the keys of the array and um, then concatenated the result to a style string that you declared outside of the scope of the for loop and then pick it up on the other side and chop off the last thing that you pended onto the end there. Um, so I'll run that and you'll see that this works. But it's kind of ugly and a little bit hard to read. You've got these double um, array style object accessors here and a lot of string concatenation and this is probably my least favorite part uh, because we went over this once for every item in the array it's going to leave us with an extra semicolon on the end which granted for this case in CSS isn't going to be a problem but for a lot of other times when you're um, concatenating strings say to prepare um, a query string in a URL you need to cut off the um, the delimiter off the very end and you end up doing something like this substring thing that goes and chops a piece off of the string. So that's one way you might have done it. Um, let's look at a way we can do it using a string method. Or sorry, an array method. So for this one, we're, instead of a for loop, we're going to use a for each. So we'll get the keys off of our style object. So that's going to give us an array of all of these things and then we'll iterate over those using a for each function. For each is kind of like a for loop except it you give it a function for an argument and it automatically calls the function once for every item in the array. So this is a little cleaner here. You see we have key there and style key there. Um, we, we've avoided so much of this array accessing so maybe it's a little easier to read but we still have to do this on the other end. Let's make sure that works. Okay, that worked as expected. We've just gone through our style object and we've we've glued the property to the value and then we've glued all of those together with a semicolon. Now that's a little better, but it still has a problem. What I don't like about it is that we declared the style string variable up here, we mutated it in here, and then we picked it up on the bottom and did some more mutation with it. It'd be a lot cleaner and easier to read and a lot more atomic if all of that stuff happened in the same place. So let's clean the slate here a little 
and I'll show you how to do this using map. So map is a function on every array in JavaScript and its job is to translate or map every element in an array to something else. For example, say I had an array full of numbers. Um, I want to find, I want an array that's, that's each of these numbers doubled. So what I could do is say map and um, return the number times two. So what's going to happen here is this function, again, just like for each, is going to be called once for every element of the array. Um, but instead of mutating some outer scoped variable, what I'm going to do is actually return the value that I want, and that's going to go into a brand new array. So if I run that, you can see that we've doubled all of those things. We can do the same. We do whatever we want inside of this um, map function. So let's let's do our string thing again with uh, our style string again using map. So again, I'm going to take the object dot keys of the style. That's going to give me um, all of the keys for that style object that we had. And then I'm going to use map instead of for each. And this function is going to do my my same kind of concatenation, but it's going to return the value instead of modify something else. We'll do that, and you'll see that mapped array has each of these style things all glued together with their colon, like they should be. The only thing left is to glue those together all with a semicolon. This is where join comes in. I can say mapped array dot join and give it the glue, and then it'll just glue all that stuff together. And you notice right here, I don't have a hanging semicolon on the end that I have to go back and clean up. So. Um, to tighten this up a little, um, you may or may not want to do this, depending on how readable you think it is, but I can do that all in one go. Here's, I'm going to get the array of keys, I'll map it using my mapping function, and then I'll just do the joy right on the end and apply that to the style string. So I'll do that, and now my style string is exactly what we want. So we can say element dot style.css text equals style string and all in one go that happened immediately one repaint one sorry one reflow one repaint um, now just for fun I want to show you one more cool thing you could do because this is JavaScript um, if in your application you needed to be able to multiply arrays of numbers quickly and easily um, based on a different factor every time it's 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 pretty easy to write a function like this so here multiply each takes a factor and this is intended to run on an instance of an array so um, I always first thing for instance methods remap this to self because it makes things a lot less confusing then I'll run self on each of my own items return the item multiplied by the factor. The only thing I have next to do is to apply that to the array prototype and now I can make any old array 4, 5, 6, 7, 78, 67. Now I have this magical method called multiply each. Give it a factor. One of course is going to return exactly the same array. Two, I'll double it. I can do four, I'll do it again and then I can even do that and because it returns an array, I'll multiply each again by two, and hey, for the fun of it, why don't we use it again for division multiply each by five, and I'm going to get, well, that wasn't very interesting, was it? Point two. I'm going to get some numbers back. Okay, so that's a quick how-to on how to use the array map and join functions. I really do use join a lot. And I guess as long as we're here, I might as well show you how to get an array out of, um, say, a query string. If it's well formatted like this, I can use the strings split method to blow that apart into an array and then join it back together if I want with a dim different delimiter. Anyway, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching.